please turn to page four. In the space before me, I envision the Buddha, Lord of Sages, surrounded by unfathomable root and lineage gurus, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Dungi Namgar Dumbad Hube Wambola Gor Zadu Gil Hamad Han Sanje Changsen Padu Mebe Kone Antonio? <clears throat> I and all mother sentient beings extensive refuge in the root and lineage gurus. We take refuge in perfect Buddhas, the transcendent conquerors. We take refuge in the Holy Dharma, free from attachment to peaceful Nirvana. We take refuge in the noble assembly of Bodhisattvas, endowed with realization and liberation. Dan Jova Margi Namge Tadan Yampe Semjen Tamje Zawad Hang Kube Laman Hamla Kyabzu Jiwa Zobe Sanje Chom Dende Namla Kyabzu Jiwa Shiva Chada Dhamde Jo Namla Kyabzu Jiwa Ridro Niden Kyabzu Pabe Tso Namla Kyabzu Jiwa Dhadan Jova Margi Namge Tadan Yampe Senjen Tamje Zawad Hang Kyupe Lama Namla Kyabzu Jiwa Sobe Sanje Chum Dende Namla Kyabzu Jiwa Shiva Chadra Dhambe Cho Namla Kyabzu Jiwa Ridro Niden Kyabzu Pape So Namla Kyabzu Jiwa Dhadan Jowa Margi Namke Tadan Yampe Senjen Tamje Sawa dhang kyupe lama nam la kyabzu jiwa Sobe sanje chom dende nam la kyabzu jiwa Shiva chadra dhambe chom nam la kyabzu jiwa Rido niden kyabzu pape So nam la kyabzu jiwa Sandra? They all sentient beings who have not realized that a self in all appearances are by nature dharma tattu, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they not be separated from the happiness which is free from suffering. May they rest in equanimity, free from attachment and aversion. Dada,那我他们这就给应给让心引爆了的他妈,托被生前他们这的我他们的为困难的不来救济,东亚他们同样给困难的不来救济,东亚没被的我他们没得我救济,那人他他你他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他他
Masimjen tamjegi tundu nirwa yang tabra sobe sanjegi kumparin poje tabra jade jedu dewa sheba sumju sanga jujin tu dam kune tuwa shabe jugala jupar la jau. The objects of refuge dissolve into me. Please now take a few moments to check in, so to say, with both body and mind. Checking in by way of giving space, giving time for body and mind to settle, to settle evenly. To settle comfortably, to ease into. We are easing into because what we are leaving behind we have become addicted and habituated to, even if it is not ultimately what we want. We're not easing into this because what we're easing into is something new, is something foreign. But rather what we're easing into is what's part of that innate nature, whatever we call that innate nature, So now, if there is a strategy, it's the strategy of not messing with it, not trying to improve something. But simply to get out of the way and let both body and mind settle. A reminder that if you need something more than this in order to settle, then you can rely on awareness or mindfulness of the experience of breath arising and ceasing, arising and ceasing. Breath as a property of the body, Breath as the energy that arises and ceases from moment to moment within your body, within this body. So let mind and body be in the same place. Stop running around. and experience body and mind as directly as possible. Breathing in, Remembering the resolve to be free ourselves. Breathing out, remembering the resolve of doing this, not only for one's own sake, but for the sake of all beings who have been our mothers. Breathing in, remember the resolve to be free. Breathing out, remember the resolve to free others. Breathing in the experience of clarity, 
breathing out the experience of letting go. Breathing in the experience of clarity. Breathing out the experience of letting go. Rising, seizing, rising, seizing, coming, going. Breathing in with loving kindness, breathing out with compassion. Breathing in with may all beings be well and happy. Breathing out, may all beings be free from suffering. Now page nine. <clears throat> Lucrezia. Okay. Nine. Oh. Wind and... Sorry. 
uh, compassionate transcendent conquerors dwelling in the ten directions, please heed me. In the past, when you, the 35 compassionate transcendent conquerors, engaged in bodhisattva deeds, you aroused bodhicitta and vowed to cleanse the obscurations of wandering beings in times when the five regenerations are rampant. Following this pledge, in order to protect us helpless wandering beings, today we invite you to safeguard and stand by us as our last resort. Having come, regard us with eyes of compassion and purify our faults and downfalls. Please come and cause our store of merit to increase. Jujuna, Jube, Jumden, Tuje, Timbud, Han, Tempa, Namda, Lak, Hongsu, so Jumden, Tuje, Timbud, Han, Tempa, Sum Jews, Hung up, Poke, Nam, Jang, Jews, and Peche, Bajo, Betsy, Ningmanga, Do, Dova, Namke, Deba, Jungwa, Tuke, Chin, Tudam, Jita, Shiva, Dishindu. Then Tacha Gomegi, Dova, Gubele, Du, Gunkia, Dong, Punyan, Duchen, Drenji, China, Tuje, Jingi, Jine, Tacha, Gi, Neton, Jonshin, Sonanki, Sobewe, Ledu, Jomparji, No. Bottom of page 22. All are dressed in the style of a renunciant Nirmanakaya and are adorned with the 32 excellent marks and 80 minor marks such as the crown protuberance and wheels and the feet. With their 60 aspects of melodious speech, they proclaim the clear sound of the Mahayana teachings. As their minds do not move from Vajra like Samadhi, they clearly understand all objects of knowledge in the three times. Their bodies are garbed in the three Dharma robes and garlands of light shine like the sun from their bodies to alleviate the pain of miserable destinies. With eyes open wide like lotus petals, they behold me and all sentient beings with great compassion. Upon merely beholding them, these great beings effortlessly accomplish the temporary and ultimate purposes of all sentient beings. They thus then abide with legs in virtue posture. As, you as we raise beautiful jewel parasols with golden handles, delightfully adorned all around, with pleasing forms so lovely to behold, we make unceasing offerings to the lords of sages. Page 36, middle of that page, Omar. To those, in as many words as exist in the ten directions, all of the lions among humans, the Tathagatas of the three times, to all of them without exception, 
I posted with faithful body, speech, and mind. Through the power of this prayer for excellent conduct, may all the big victorious ones vividly appear in my mind. With bodies as numerous as atoms in the universe, I respectfully bow down and pay homage to all the victorious ones. Claudia Page 37. In a single atom residing amidst their bodhisattva sons, there are as many Buddhas as there are atoms in the entire world. In the same way, I imagine the entire Dharma expands to be completely filled with victorious ones. With inexhaustible oceans of praise and oceans of melodious sounds extolling the noble qualities of the victorious ones, I praise all the Sugatas. To all those worthy of honor, while offering praise with supreme faith, I bow unceasingly with bodies as numerous as dust motes in the universe. <laughs> Yanki yen la gyasu dra kunji gyawa kunji yonte ramzu jing Dewa shepa tamche dagi tu chaja oba tamche la Shintu kunji dra nigi ludu pa yi nam kuntu Chutu debe tu bar ji Cecil, page 38. With the best of flowers and exquisite garlands, music, ointments, supreme parcels, divine lights, and the finest incense, I make offerings to the victorious ones. With the finest garments, sweet fragrances, and powder incense piled high as Mount Meru, and with everything in exalted and sublime display, I make offerings to the victorious ones. I also imagine vast and unsurpassed offerings made to all of the victorious ones. Through the power of my faith in excellent conduct, I prostrate and offer to all of the victorious ones. <laughs> Kawa de da la ne chopar ji nabza damba nam da dricho da jema purma re ra nyam pa da kube ke bar pa be chugun ji kawa de da la yang chopar ji chopa gang na la me gya je wa de da kawa dam je la yang mo bo jo la de be top da gi Page 48, Jasper. I confess whatever wrong I have done with my body, speech, and also mind while being overpowered by attachment, hatreds, and ignorance. I rejoice in the merits of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions, the solitary Buddhas, those on the path of learning, those beyond learning, and all beings. Ayyadhajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajaj
of those lives in the worlds of the ten directions who having passed through the stage of Buddhahood attained awaking free from attachment to all of these protectors. I beseech you to turn and surpass the will of Dharma to all those who intend to demonstrate Nirvana. When my pants join together, I beseech you to remain for the benefit and happiness of the all beings, for all many kalpas, and there are atoms in the universe. Whatever is like virtue I may have gathered from prostration, offering, confession, rejoicing, requesting, and beseeching, I dedicate it to the awakening for all beings. Ay <laughs> Daki Tamo Rabja Sovarji Chasa Wada and Jujing Shambada Jese Yiran Kuzing Sovai Kewa Chungse Daki Chisapa Tamje Sobe Chanju Chirngo In accordance with the 35 Sugata's aspiration to exhaust the karmic veils of those who remember their excellent names and pay homage to them, please bestow the fruits of this wish. Now, bottom of page 50. Throughout all time, all sentient beings take refuge in the Guru, take refuge in the Buddha, take refuge in the Dharma, and take refuge in the Sangha. Homage to the Bhagavan Tathagata Arhat, the perfectly complete Buddha Shakyamuni. Lenny? Homage to the one who has fully conquered with Vajra essence. Homage to the jewel radiating light. Homage to the sovereign king of Nagas. Homage to the leader of the brave. Adriana. Homage to glorious uh, joy. Homage to jewel fire. Homage to jewel moonlight. Homage to meaningful to be whole. Tracy. Homage to jewel moon. Homage to the stainless one. Homage to glorious giving. Homage to the pure one. Samantha, top of 52. Homage uh, to giving of purity. Homage to the water god. Homage to the god of water gods. Homage to good glory. Anna Isabel. Homage to glorious sandalwood. Homage to infinite violence. Homage to glorious light. Homage to glory without sorrow. Vicky. Homage to the son of no craving. Homage to glory of flowers. Daniela. Homage to the Tathagata radiant pure display of complete omniscience. Christina. Homage to the Tathagata's completely omniscient display of the lotus light. Homage to the glory of wealth. Homage to the glory of mindfulness. Joyce. Homage to widely renowned glorious name, homage to the king, victory banner that crowns the sovereign. Rowan. Top of 53. The glorious battle. Homage to the glorious one who fully subdues, homage to the sublime victor in battle. Judy? Homage to the one gone beyond through complete victory. Homage to glorious illuminating array. Homage to all subduing lotus jewel. Uh, waiting. 
Homage to the king of Mao Meru, the Tathagata Arhat, perfectly complete Buddha, abiding on a jewel lotus. All these and all the Tathagatas, all the Arhats, however many perfectly complete Buddhas abide in all the worlds of the ten directions, and all the Buddhas, the transcendent conquerors who prevail in this world, please heed me. Josh, half of 54. In this and former lives without beginning, and all the states of birth within samsara, I have committed evil deeds. I have instigated others and found joy in their crimes. I have stolen the wealth of stupas, the sangha community, and the sangha of the ten directions. Larry? I have incited others to steal and found joy in their thefts. I have committed the five immediate sins. I have incited others to commit them and found joy in their downfalls. I have fully entered the path of engaging in the ten unwholesome deeds, I have incited others to enter it, and have found joy in their submission. Laura Herman, first half of 55. Obscured by all these karmic veils, I and sentient beings have gone to hell, have gone to the birthplaces of animals, have gone to the worlds of hungry ghosts, have taken birth in savage places as barbarians, as long-lived gods, and as humans with impaired sense faculties. Mariana? I have turned to corrupted views and karmic obscurations from having failed to please the Buddhas I encountered. In the presence of the Bhagavan Buddha, with no mind before their eyes, in their witness before the authentic ones, the all-knowing one, the all-knowing ones, the all-seeing ones, I disclose all these karmic obscurations. I declare them. I shall not hide them, and hereafter I shall sever and bind them. Rodrigo, uh, first half of 56. All Buddhas, transcendent conquerors, please hit me. I gather all the roots of virtue I have accumulated in cyclic existence through having acted generously towards another samsaric sentient beings, even only offering a mouthful of food to those born in the real, in the animal Mir realm. Mi Miriam? Together with any root of virtue from having guarded moral discipline, any root virtue from having practiced poor conduct, any root of virtue from having brought saint beings to full maturity, any root of virtue from having given rise to bodhicitta, the mindset on supreme awakening. Anna Elisa, uh, half of 57. And any root of virtue from unsurpassed primordial awareness accumulated in this and former lives without beginning within samsara. All these, I dedicate them perfectly, supremely, most supremely and sublimely towards unsurpassed, unsurpassed perfectly complete awakening. Alexander? Just as the previous Bhagavan Buddha's perfectly performed dedication and just as the Bhagavan Buddhas who have not yet appeared will perfectly perform dedication, and just as the present Bhagavan Buddhas perfectly perform dedication, likewise shall I perform perfect dedication. I confess each and every wrongdoing and rejoice in all merit. Uh, Kimberly, top of 58. I exhort and supplicate all Buddhas that I may attain unsurpassed, most excellent primordial wisdom. With my palms joined together, I wholeheartedly take refuge in all those with praiseworthy qualities as infinite as a vast ocean. All the Buddhas supreme among humans who exist at present, those who have passed into nirvana, and those who have not yet appeared. Now, go back to page 50. Uh, this round, I'm going to do the homage uh, in Tibetan. Then, uh, together, uh, we will do uh, in English the next two sections. <clears> o 
Sanjela,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了,给我做了
uh, Larry, 57. Judy, page 57. And any root of virtue from unsurpassed primordial awareness accumulated in this and former lives without beginning, within some sorrow, all these I dedicate them perfectly, supremely, most supremely, and sublimely towards unsurpassed, perfectly complete awakening. Just as the previous Bhagavan Buddhas perfectly performed dedication, and just as the Bhagavan Buddhas who have not yet appeared will perfectly perform dedication, and just as the present Bhagavan Buddhas perfectly perform dedication, likewise shall I perform perfect dedication. We confess each and every wrongdoing and rejoice in all merit. <clears throat> 58, Elena. I exhort and supplicate all Buddhas that, that I may attain unsurpassed most excellent primordial wisdom. With my palms joined together, I will hardly take refuge in all those praiseworthy qualities as infinite as vast ocean. All the Buddhas supreme among human who exist at present, those who have passed into Nirvana and those who have not yet appeared. Now page 50 again. Uh, those, so this third round, I'm going to uh, do the recitation uh, all together. Uh, so then, uh, especially if you want to take this time to do some prostrations, this will be a good time. Don't worry, I will not be calling uh, any names uh, for this third round. Uh,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,神仙,
and have found joy in their submission, obscured by all these karmic veils. I and all sentient beings have gone to hell, have gone to the birthplaces of animals, have gone to the worlds of hungry ghosts, have taken birth in savage places, as barbarians, as long-lived gods, and as humans with impaired sense faculties. I have turned to corrupted views and karmic obscurations from having failed to please the Buddhas I encounter. In the presence of the Bhagavan Buddha's wisdom mind before their eyes and their witness before the authentic ones, the all-knowing one, the all-seeing ones, I disclose all these karmic obscurations. I declare them, I shall not hide them, and hereafter I shall sever and bind them. All Buddhas, transcendent conquerors, please heed me. I gather all the roots of virtue I have accumulated in cyclic existence through having acted generously towards another samsaric sentient being, even only offering a mouthful of food to those born in the animal realm. Together with any root of virtue from having guarded moral discipline, any root of virtue from having practiced pure conduct, any root of virtue from having brought sentient beings to full maturity, any root of virtue from having given rise to bodhicitta, any mind, the mindset on supreme awakening, and any root of virtue from unsurpassed primordial awareness, accumulated in this ten former lives without beginning within samsara, all these I dedicate them perfectly, supremely, most supremely, and sublimely towards unsurpassed perfectly complete awakening. Just as the previous Bhagavan Buddhas perfectly performed the dedication, and just as the Bhagavan Buddhas who have not yet appeared will perfectly perform dedication, and just as the present Bhagavan Buddhas perfectly perform dedication, likewise shall I perform perfect dedication. I confess each and every wrongdoing and rejoice in all merit. I exhort and supplicate all Buddhas that I may attain unsurpassed most excellent primordial wisdom. With my palms joined together, I wholeheartedly take refuge in all those with praiseworthy qualities, as infinite as a vast ocean. All the Buddhas supreme among humans who exist at present, those who have passed into Nirvana, and those who have not yet appeared. Again now, think in the presence of the 35 Buddhas. We have laid bare, we have put in front everything. Everything that we otherwise have forgotten, everything that we otherwise have hidden away. Anything that is of the 10 non-virtues, and from the ten non-virtues, all the other ways of unskillful acting, actions that have harmed ourselves, actions that have harmed others. Having put down, having laid aside, having exposed all of them in the presence of the 35 Buddhas. We can now once again settle evenly, let body and mind settle. And now having put aside all these karmic obscurations to whatever degree we're able to uh, review, uncover them to that degree, we are able to let them go, put them aside. Then with that lightness, with that burden having put down, having let go, we settle both body and mind, settle into their own places, settle evenly.
I exhort and supplicate all Buddhas that I may attain unsurpassed, most excellent primordial wisdom. With my palms together, joined together, I wholeheartedly take refuge in all those with praiseworthy qualities as infinite as a vast ocean. All the Buddhas supreme among humans who exist at present, those who have passed into the nirvana, and those who have not yet appeared. And so uh, with this, uh, we have the three uh, recitations. Um, Yeah, so uh, yesterday, uh, basically, we have finished uh, looking at the main text, uh, arriving at the part of making this uh, supreme dedication. Uh, so here it says, uh, basically, we are saying we follow the example of the Buddhas, uh, who have uh, uh, the Buddhas of past, present, and future, just as Buddhas of the past uh, were dedicating merit from the beginning of the path until the state of Buddha, just as the Buddhas in the present time, uh, wherever they may be, are also uh, dedicating merit. And Buddhas of the future uh, will become Buddhas because of this dedication of merit. In that same way, uh, we make this perfect dedication. Then, uh, almost to kind of summarize everything, uh, starting from the bottom of page 57, once again it says, you know, I reveal, I, I mm, uncover each and every wrongdoing, and I rejoice in each and every uh, uh, instance of merit and virtue. Then I exhort and supplicate all Buddhas that I may attain unsurpassed, most excellent uh, primordial wisdom. So finally, it is wisdom that dispel uh, the confusion that keeps us entangled in cyclic existence. The last is a verse of paying homage, taking refuge uh, as a way of, you could say, exiting the practice we want to carry uh, the power of refuge, the protection of refuge uh, with us. Uh, so here we say we take refuge to all those with praiseworthy qualities as infinite as a vast ocean. Uh, and here specifically taking refuge in Buddhas. Mm, in some instance, uh, for example, His Holiness the Dalai Lama has emphasized that we talk about the three refuges, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And there he emphasizes that the main uh, protection from suffering, he says, uh, is the Dharma. Uh, and so there, what His Holiness is emphasizing is until and unless we actually apply the Dharma, apply what the Buddha uh, taught, what the Buddha showed us, uh, praying to Buddha, uh, appealing to Buddha, praying to the Sangha, uh, or following the Sangha you know, like a shadow, uh, will not ultimately free us from suffering in its causes. It is only by following, learning, reflecting, and applying the Dharma that we become free. Then in other contexts, uh, such as in this famous uh, important text, especially in uh, the Gagyu tradition, uh, in this text known in, uh, as the Uttara Tantra, uh, or Ratnagotra Vibhaga. Uh, this is the main text uh, that teaches about Bodhi, uh, Buddha nature. And in the Dugongkagyu especially, 
Uh, it is said that this is the main source of the Mahamudra teachings. In this text, uh, it discusses seven, what it calls the seven Vajra topics. Uh, and part of the seven Vajra topics is actually the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. There in the Ratna Gotra or the Uttara Tantra, the peerless continuum, it, it, the title has the word Tantra, but it is not uh, explicitly at all uh, about Vajrayana. And here, Tantra just means like continuum, uh, an interrupted continuum. So Uttara is uh, peerless uh, without comparison. So it's called the peerless continuum, which is referring to uh, this Buddha nature, right? So here in this text, in the Uttara Tantra, in the peerless continuum, it says, uh, although we speak of the three jewels, the ultimate refuge is Buddha. Now, is, the, uh, is His Holiness the Dalai Lama contradicting the Uttara Tantra? Uh, no, of course. But they're speaking of it from different uh, kind of emphasis. Uh, so, yes, without applying dharma, simply praying to buddhas, simply, you know, uh, shadowing sangha, uh, the noble sangha, is not going to free us from suffering and its causes. However, why the Uttara Tantra says buddha is the ultimate refuge? Because when we apply the dharma, and we apply the Dharma skillfully and diligently, it is when through the application of the Dharma that we achieve the state of Buddha, that we are finally freed from suffering and its causes. So then from that perspective, it is the state of Buddha that is the final and ultimate protection from suffering and its causes. So from there we can understand this last section here on page 58. With my palms joined together, I wholeheartedly take refuge in all those with praiseworthy qualities as infinite as a vast ocean. All the Buddhas, supreme among humans who exist presently, those who have passed into Nirvana, and those who have yet to appear. So here it's uh, the Buddha as ultimate refuge is basically saying uh, until and unless we actualize the state of Buddha, then there is still going to be uh, some uh, or a lot of dukkha or suffering uh, involved. Yeah? So this is uh, this last verse here. So let's see uh, if there is any questions uh, regarding the main text or any parts that we have been reciting uh, these last uh, 14 days now. <laughs> and so now is a good time, a chance, you know, to, to see anything uh, and, and well, and I will try. <laughs> to explain. Dr. Hundi? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I want to express or <laughs> try to express uh, that I am very grateful for your uh -huh. and sure. <laughs> opportunity for practice this beautiful practice. I have one question in this last um, section you explained. The note mm -hmm. says accumulate a hundred and eight times. That that's mean that means that uh, this part is fair to say many times. I don't understand. Uh, it's talking about the main practice, uh, ah, as I mentioned. Okay. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, the whole text itself is was composed and designed as a text to primarily use in retreats. 
So when you're in a retreat, uh, in a, a, a more uh, controlled environment, uh, that's one way to look at retreat, uh, then you should do the main practice at least 108 times uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Not just the last section. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lai, mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering about the 35 Buddhas. Of all the Buddhas that could have been chosen, these were chosen. Um, is there any reason that these particular Buddhas were chosen for this particular practice? Or No, uh, there are reasons, but reasons that are not objects of knowledge for us. <laughs> As I said, Buddha Shakyamuni gave these 35 names, uh, according you know, to what the tradition says. Uh, and, uh, and then explain the qualities and you know, uh, the different uh, particular connections they have with purifying this particular non-virtue or that particular non-virtue or the amount of non-virtue uh, that's given in um, the other sections uh, that we have done once or twice. Uh, so these are just, and I also talked about, you know, part of the origin story, the immediate origin story uh, I mentioned uh, which is what occurred during the time of Buddha, uh, this Buddha. There were 35 monks who uh, collectively created a very negative karma, somehow uh, causing the death uh, of some person. And so then they went to Upali, uh, the foremost in observing the vows and uh, how to purify vows and to ask Upali, uh, what can they do to purify that negativity? Mm, so then Upali, uh, on their behalf, went to the Buddha. And the Buddha then gave uh, these names of the 35 Buddhas and the particular words of this practice here. Then I also mentioned then back then, uh, when talking about this, that there is somewhere I've come across uh, a further explanation given about how in the distant past, the Buddha Shakyamuni himself was part of a group of 35 monks uh, who uh, in, in way back previously, uh, collectively also uh, found themselves in a situation where they, they, they were engaged or uh, did some negativity that needed to be purified. And when they then worked on purifying all of that, finally, uh, you have these 35 Buddhas. So Buddha Shakyamuni is also connected these 34 Buddhas as fellow practitioners at some distant lifetimes uh, way past. Yeah. Dr. Lai, mm -hmm. the line, um, humans with impaired sense faculties, mm -hmm. what does impaired sense faculties mean? blind, uh, death, uh, meaning, you know, uh, whatever that impairs you from uh, easily understanding the Dharma. Uh, so including if cognitively, you know, you are not capable of understanding, then even if you have a human body, it's not as ideal, which is not to say, right? that uh, somehow if you have impaired faculties, uh, you, you are, you know, like more negative. It's just stating as a fact mm, the challenges. Um, yeah. And of course, these days, you know, thankfully with technology, uh, uh, these conditions uh, can be better handled and also uh, various ways of, you know, uh, helping and, but it's describing basically a state of existence that even normally we say human existence is so great, so wonderful from the perspective of, you know, uh, the availability of Dharma and how it can be practiced. So there in that section is basically listing out all those conditions that makes access to the Dharma and practice of Dharma uh, more challenging. 
I have a comment okay. about, oh, sorry. Uh, I have a Leah? comment about Go ahead. Hold on, yeah. hold on, Eric. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. sorry. I, I was just going to uh, Hold on, uh, hold on, hold on. Leah, you were going to say something? Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then Larry, and then Judy. Yes, I have a comment about impaired sense faculties, uh, mm -hmm. the, the subject that Leah brought up. I actually, I think sometimes a full sense faculty, for example, the vision, um, can distract us because we're so uh, enamored and attached to what we see. I've just been through an experience where I lost a sense faculty. Mm -hmm. And it really helped me to understand that mm -hmm. without that sense, you, you, you are not distracted by, by, it was a touch. I lost mm -hmm. sensation. Mm -hmm. And I realized that my mind is now cut off from sensory perception. Mm -hmm. So in that, in that case, the, the, the change of the sense faculty helps me to get a perspective on what it is that we're being distracted by in this, with, these, uh, with these senses. Mm -hmm. So I think when you talk about impaired sense faculty, sometimes a change can actually help you understand what's really going mm -hmm. on. So Bottom line, it is what, whatever, you know, you, where you don't have a choice, you know, it has impaired you from learning and practicing the Dharma. That is what is being described here. Uh, yes. And, and that's why it, we are emphasizing here what needs to be done with, what needs to be avoided, what needs to be purified. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Judy? I was just going to say that does that not mean psychologically blind? I mean, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, anything now, that, you know, as a human being, yeah, and we, and oh, yeah. and you know it is it is very just very straightforward here yeah it's it's not getting all philosophical and sophisticated it simply means you know if you were blind rem remember during the Buddha's time uh, there is no braille you know uh, how are you going to access all these texts mm, then for us you know without translators uh, we are blind <laughs> so to say you know. Without translators, we are deaf, uh, especially like when I teach and when I'm teaching uh, in English and my audience is mostly uh, understands Spanish. So without translators, you know, I might as well be mute on my end and my audience be deaf on their end. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Lai, so you were, mm -hmm. you were talking about um, that question of the origin of these, of the 35 Buddhas. Was that, was that part of the canon? Yes, uh, it's in the Maharatnakutta, uh, okay. which is a collection of Mahayana texts called the Maharatnakutta. Has that been translated into English? Uh, it's being translated. I, I mentioned this um, okay. yeah, part of the eighty-four thousand project. Eighty-four thousand. Uh, it's being translated. Because uh, I looked it up, and that's what it said in process. But I yes, just wanted yes. To verify that. Yes, okay. it's being translated. Uh, and I also mentioned. Uh, does anyone remember? Uh, there's another place you can find this. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. The, 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 the particular section. Um, no, there is a book I mentioned way early. <laughs> Our book geek is not here. Oh. I think today. That that is something I, I wanted to, to ask you about because I don't remember. You you, you mentioned something yeah. by um was it Wisdom Publications. Uh, no, it is uh, uh, Karma C. C. Chang, the professor at Penn State University, who has now oh, passed away. 
Okay. He produced a volume called something like Mahayana Sutras or something like that. Might be out of print, but that is basically a collection of translations from the Maharatna Gutta, uh, but translated from the Chinese canon. Uh, so there are some variations here and there from the texts as found in the Tibetan canon, but basically uh, it's there. So inside this book, and yeah, uh, Kim found the reference uh, in the chat. If you look at the chat window, uh, the bibliographic reference. Uh, so in there, uh, it's called the questions of Upali or the inquiries of Upali. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lai. Yes. Uh, will we be practicing Saturday morning too? Yes, yes. I said um, oh. Saturday would just be shorter because okay. I, I have to start a next program immediately after. Okay. I just, I can't be, mm -hmm. I can't join you tomorrow because mm -hmm. of a doctor's yeah. appointment. So that would be great. Uh, I would right, like right. to be there Saturday. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Dr. Lai, mm -hmm. um, first of all, I never got to say this, but I wanted to thank you for disassociating Hinayana from Theravada. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's been a topic of discussion that I've been involved <laughs> in. It was quite confusing and very aggressive. <laughs> oh, yes. On, you know, the other person's part, they were very sure that the Mahayanas were very angry at them. So it's really nice to have that. <laughs> The other thing I wanted to ask about is it says bind and sever. And, you know, for us who are, you know, fairly new, um, mm -hmm. we learn different practices. We learn mm -hmm. you know, this one over here and this one over here and this one over here. Yes, and yes. It takes us a while to kind of like put it all together. So, mm -hmm. you know, my mind instantly bind and sever goes to Vajrasattva and to... Um, you know, some other practices. Can you recommend it, you know, particular practices where you want to actually bind and sever these things? Uh, this practice itself, you know, is, is, is sufficient. Uh, <laughs> so uh, then of course, you know, whatever, uh, there is, there are, you know, uh, purification, uh, clearing practices, you know, uh, in the, in Tibetan tradition, over time, I don't know how early this came about, um, they, they have these groups of uh, practices that, that are kind of grouped together. Uh, so like uh, there's a very early set that supposedly, we, we don't know, but the, the, the tradition says, for example, uh, what, what the king, what Trisung Detsen was taught uh, as the five core recitations that he should do. Uh, so then there's a set of things like that, like uh, noble aspiration prayers of Samantabhadra. This actually 35 Buddhas. Uh, uh, this is not yet about the clearing, okay? I'm just giving a general, yeah? So reciting this text, uh, reciting the noble aspirations of Samantabhadra, reciting the sutra known as the sutra at the moment of death, uh, and then reciting uh, Vajrapani, uh, Dharani, and I think reciting like maybe Heart um, uh, Sutra, maybe I think. So there's a group like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then uh, regarding what we call purification or clearing practice, there is a group of five practices. Uh, that does not include the 35 Buddhas, uh, but a group of basically five uh, Edam deities that in Tibetan Buddhism is considered like, uh, like they specialize in clearing out yak, <laughs> clearing out uh, stuff. And in a way, different types of clearing yeah. uh, there is the clearing of so vajrasattva in this context you know 
so first of all, before we talk about like specific specialization, yeah, it needs to be repeated again and again that one single practice, one Buddha Shakyamuni, one Chenrezi, one Tara, uh, if you have skill, if you have devotion, it's more than sufficient to clear everything we want to clear. So from that perspective, all the transcendent deities, Buddhas, they have equally infinite ability on their side. Right? But on our end, because our own karmic stuff is a whole mix of like who knows what, yeah? Then at different points in our karmic clearing, it is said that certain, yeah, certain Buddha principles, certain yidams, um, more directly connect to that kind of clearing. So in that context, they say, for example, Vajrasattva is especially clearing uh, damages in uh, Vajrayana Samayas. Not that Vajrasattva is not capable of clearing ten non-virtues, but particularly uh, the breaches and the, the harm that is done uh, uh, to our Vajrayana vows, Vajrasattva is supreme in clearing that. Uh, then uh, there is, uh, so Vajrasattva is one of these five uh, clearing, uh, cleansing uh, idams. Uh, one is Vajrasattva. Uh, then two forms of um, Vajra Vidarana. Uh, if you don't know, who this? Don't worry too much about it. Two forms of Vajavidarana. Mm. A semi wrathful uh, that appears iconographically like Vajrasattva, but uh, green in color. Uh, and also, one other detail, or two other details. One is that in the right hand, instead of holding just a single Vajra, uh, he holds a cross Vajra. And then the, the, the face is slightly uh, frowning. Yeah? And then there is the uh, wrathful um, Vajavidarana that is blue in color, uh, looks like Vajrapani. Then uh, the fourth uh, of these, this group of five, is um, uh, Usha Vijaya uh, or uh, this Namgyalma, uh, which in other contexts, Ushnisha Vijaya is associated with a group of three idams known as the three longevity deities. Uh, today, most Tibetans, when they think of Ushnisha Vijaya or, or, or Namgyalma, they think of longevity, uh, uh, of stabilizing any uh, accidental deaths uh, is purified through uh, Namgyalma practice. But Namgyalma is also a known for clearing, uh, cleansing uh, in this group of five. Then the fifth one is a, 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 a wrathful, a uh, fierce form uh, known as um, uh, Uchusma or Brikumkutta uh, uh, in Tibet, Mete, uh, a wrathful uh, deity similar in form to wrathful Vajrapani. Uh, it's the fifth. So there is a group of these five uh, in terms of uh, cleansing deities. <laughs> So there are lots of, lots of things like that, you know. Mm. Dr. Lai, would you repeat the fifth one one more time? Just the name? Uh, it's called Uchusma. Uh, Brikumkutta. Uh, Metse in uh, Tibetan. M-E-T-S-E-K. Uh, Metse. 
Okay. Uh, which, well, thank which, you. Which basically means, uh, <clears throat> literally, his name is the Eater of Filth. Oh, gosh. Yum, 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 Eater of Filth. In Japan, some Zen monasteries in Japan, uh, he is like the patron deity, so to say, of lavatories. Oh. Yeah. So in some Japan, Japanese Zen monasteries, there's a tradition of installing him in uh, lavatories. Mm. Uh, he eats filth. <laughs> now, Namgyama is a Tibetan name. Namgyama is, is the Tibetan for Ushnisha Vijaya. Okay, that's right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew that once upon a time. Uh, I want to recommend at this point uh, a text that you can uh, uh, download from uh, lotsawahouse.com. Mm, I think maybe Kim in Singapore can pull up this text. It's on Lotsawa House uh, and a great resource uh, for the translation of Tibetan Buddhist practices and texts. Uh, this one is a teaching by Petru Rinpoche, the famous uh, author of Words of My Perfect Teacher, Petru Rinpoche. Uh, it's called Nine Considerations and Criteria for Benefiting Beings. This mm. is a really wonderful teaching. So especially the 35 Buddhist practice, uh, we say, is to purify and cleanse uh, lapses in our bodhisattva vows or any actions that we have done uh, that has great potential to harm our, our bodhisattva resolve, our bodhicitta resolve. Mm. Uh, so that is, so in a way you can say, right, mm, if we, we want to talk about um, specialization, then uh, the 35 Buddhas in particular, uh, it specializes, uh, this practice specializes in damages to uh, potential threats and harm to our commitment to waking up for the benefit of beings, right? Uh, so then, uh, on the one hand, we, we need to do this and to also in doing is basically learning, you know? Uh, you might say, you know, well, I have not, you know, I don't, I know for sure I did not commit the five immediate sins uh, in this lifetime. But this is also to plant the seeds of saying, be careful, you know, in future lifetimes, don't commit uh, these five uh, heinous sins, right? Uh, so one hand, it's doing that, you know, then we also, we can supplement uh, this, this practice by learning more and more and understanding more and more. Uh, what is this Bodhisattva training? What is this Bodhisattva way of life? What is this Bodhisattva commitment? Of course, uh, Shantideva, right? Uh, that's the classic, uh, especially in the Tibetan tradition. Uh, Shantideva's uh, Bodhijayavatara. Uh, is, is the classic for learning that. Uh, but there are shorter uh, texts for sure, and one of them is here uh, by Petru Rinpoche. Petru Rinpoche, by the way, uh, even more known uh, in the Tibetan context than the words of my perfect teacher, in a way, is his ability to teach uh, the Bodhijayavatara uh, to the masses. Apparently, until uh, Petru Rinpoche, who lived in the 19th century, until Petru Rinpoche's time, uh, the Bodhijayavatara was taught in a very limited way, as in a limited audience. Uh, it was only taught to monks attending seminaries, uh, pursuing like the Geshe degree or the Kempo degree, uh, uh, and even that, right, we, we, we think, you know, in the West that every monk or nun, you know, goes to seminary. But no, right? monks that go to seminary, go to Shedra, yeah, go to philosophical school training. Uh, I would say, I don't have the exact statistic, but uh, no more than 10% probably uh, of the entire monastic population actually 
uh, goes to seminary. Uh, so think about that, right? So, so until Petru Rinpoche, uh, Bodhicaya Avatara wasn't taught um, beyond the context of these seminaries. Uh, but in the 19th century, uh, Petru Rinpoche um, started to teach this text widely uh, in like open audiences. In some ways, causing some, you know, like, oh, how can he do that? Because there was a feeling like, you know, topics like that are so profound that if you just randomly teach to anyone and everyone who happened to walk by and come through, uh, they might misunderstand uh, because they have, don't have enough background. Uh, so the resistance, uh, the resistance to teaching it widely is based on that. And there is something legitimate to be said about that. Uh, I, I feel that too, you know, sometimes when we do programs, we just say, oh, anyone uh, can wander in and out. The problem, I mean, great thing is, yes, people make a connection, but also on the other hand, uh, they might just come in, you know, without any context and hear one, you know, little chunk and then walk away thinking, oh, you know, oh, that's what Dharma is, you know, it's a little risky. But Petru Rinpoche, it is said that uh, he was able to teach to wide audiences that he, in a way, created a fervor throughout Tibet, first starting in Eastern Tibet, and then as he, and he traveled a lot, he was always on the move. Then he taught everywhere he went. Then more and more people became interested in uh, this text. So he created like a mini revival in the interest of Bodhicaya Avatara. Then the other thing, he was so skilled uh, and, and learned, basically, uh, is that he was able to teach this text. Uh, this text, Bodhicaya Vatara um, of Shantideva, chapter 9 uh, is the chapter on wisdom. Uh, all the other chapters, more or less, no matter what lineage of Tibetan Buddhism, you, you teach all the other chapters more or less the same way. You interpret all the other, uh, there are 10 chapters, so you interpret all the other nine chapters more or less the same way. But chapter nine is the chapter on wisdom, and that is when uh, particular lineages have, over time, understood the more kind of subtle points uh, in more particular ways. Uh, so that in the Geluk, lineage, uh, based on the teachings of Lama Tsongkhapa, they have a particular take on uh, the subtle points of chapter 9. Not, not the overall points, but the subtle points. Uh, likewise, the Kagyupas uh, have a particular uh, kind of uh, way of you know, explaining that. Uh, likewise, Nima, likewise, Sakya, uh, so what Padre Rinpoche was able to do, because he was so learned, is that when a Sakyapa monastery invites him to teach and he agrees to teach that, he was able to teach chapter 9 based on the Sakyapa view. When a Galukpa monastery invites him to teach, he was able to teach from a Galukpa view. And when the Nyingma um, monastery invites, he taught in the Nyingma view. Uh, he, so he was truly a master of all traditions uh, and he was non-sectarian in that way. Hmm. Often when people say non-sectarian, it just means, you know, I'm going to interpret all the other traditions according to my tradition. <laughs> uh, uh, that's not really non-sectarian, you know, that is just saying, you know, uh, all is one and one is me. But better Rinpoche, you know, real non-sectarian. Uh, he taught according to all the different views. Without bias. That's the meaning of non-sectarian, without bias. And he was learned enough to do that. Uh, amazing figure. Lived very simply. He, he dreaded and, and he dreaded the trappings of uh, thrones, hierarchy, all of that. 
So he was always on the road uh, and moving around alone. Uh, he, he did not want uh, attendance because it's just, you know, a hassle. Uh, he, he was recognized as an important tuku uh, that would have afforded him. Uh, and he has his own like estate, mm, endowed estate, you know, for his tuku position with attendants, with cooks, with managers. He, he ran away from all of that. He kept uh, <laughs> traveling from place to place to place teaching. Uh, one story goes that one time he, he, he basically attended his, his own teachings one time uh, he while traveling uh, and uh, taking residence in one uh, monastery um, uh, after a few days uh, more and more monks were arriving from local area to that monastery and then he was leaving and then he said oh you're leaving i thought you came here for these teachings he said oh what teachings he said uh the abbot of this monastery is going to teach this wonderful text, you know. Uh, I advise you to stay. You should stay for these great teachings. They're so amazing. He said, oh, okay, well, you know, these are kind advice. Okay, I'm not in a hurry, you know, because he was going on pilgrimage. He said, you know, I can continue anytime. So he stayed, you know. And turns out that uh, what was being taught was his words of my perfect teacher. So then he attended those teachings, you know, sat there in the audience uh, like any ordinary monk. And then the abbot was teaching. So it said that those teachings went on for a while, for like a few months. Then uh, in the middle, towards the end of those teachings, um, a delegation of high lamas uh, was coming through on pilgrimage again from Eastern Tibet to Central Tibet. So then the abbot say, oh, you know, this weekend or next week or whatever, these high lamas are coming. So we're going to stop for a few days and prepare for them to come through. We're going to welcome them, da, da, da. And Petru Rinpoche knew, you know, like, uh oh, these people know who I am. So he, he was sort of like hiding as the delegation came through the village and he was standing behind. And these other monks were like, oh, come, 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 receive blessings from these great Rinpoches, blah, blah, blah. So he like, like, you know, put his head down and kind of like stood behind and these high lamas, you know, in their horses and uh, came, came through and one of them saw him, you know, and almost fell off the horse because again, in terms of hierarchy and all that, Pedro Rinpoche is like the real high Rinpoche. So he leaped off the horse and said, oh my God, Pedro Rinpoche is here, you know. Mm. Then, of course, the poor abbot, you know, who has been teaching Pertu Rinpoche his text, you know, like, I think he, he was the one who wanted to disappear, you know. Uh, but Pertu Rinpoche said to the abbot, he said, no, 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 you are now one of my teachers. So I have to receive these teachings from you. So please uh, uh, finish these teachings. So Pertu Rinpoche sat there for the rest of the teachings. That humble but also huh, because the Dharma huh, is not, doesn't belong to an individual. Hmm? So at the risk of sounding arrogant, you know, I listen to my own teachings from time to time because I need to hear them. It's not me. You know, I need to hear the Dharma. Uh, of course, I listen to many other people's teachings too, but I listen, need to listen to the Dharma. You have to take the medicine that you are, you know, telling other people about. Anyway, my point is, uh, this was a very special being. And so this one text, nine considerations and criteria for benefiting beings. Uh, in a very heartfelt uh, not a lot of technical terms, not a lot of like special vocabulary. He lays out, you know, how to more systematically uh, think about and uh, prepare ourselves in terms of actualizing our bodhisattva vow of benefiting beings. Uh, consideration of the benefit to both oneself and others consideration of the status of beings, consideration of the number of beings, consideration of this and future lives, consideration of vows and non-virtue, 
which has big section there, consideration of the pros and cons of generosity. So very interesting, um, very practical as well. Uh, consideration of uh, pros and cons for one's own dharma practice. For example, in the pros and cons of material giving, yeah, he says, you know, uh, if you see some poor beings and you have some material thing that you could give and would not yourself be harmed by giving it, but would help the others, then giving whatever material goods you have to them uh, is good. Hmm? Dispel non-virtues and, and, and engage in virtues. But if give, material giving should become an obstacle to your life and limb, or to your study, contemplation, and practice, and it is of little benefit to others, do not give. Then he says, if material giving would cause harm to yourself, but help to others in equal measure, or you are not able to face the other person, he says, allot what your circumstances allow and give it. Yeah, so he was very careful, you know, about don't overextend your ability, especially as beginners. Don't don't get too heroic too quickly, uh, because it might damage your bodhisattva vow. So very practical, very good advice uh, in this text. Yeah, so take some time, you know. <clears throat> to read this uh, maybe tomorrow you know if we have some time I, I will go over some parts of this it's it's pretty easy huh? there's there's not a lot of technical terms at all in this particular short teaching <clears throat> so now uh, page 63 <clears throat> Please act according to the pledge you took when you engage in bodhisattva deeds and thus purify the negativities and downfalls of myself and other beings. By apprehending your name, by repeating and calling it again and again, I supplicate you to purify, exhaust and cleanse entirely the negativities, downfalls and obscurations of all wandering beings. In these evil times, sentient beings' actions are degraded, impure and unawakened. Our minds are suffused with negative emotions. Our offerings are scanty. They are marred by stains and other faults. Please forgive us all mistakes. The light of boundless compassion clears away the evil states and dispels demonic forces, hindrances, and hosts of wickedness. May the splendid power of the victorious ones equal to a hundred thousand saints bring forth the happiness and fortune of infinite living beings. The stream of nectar flowing from the immaculate dharmadhatu space fully cleanses the stains of evil tendencies. May the splendid power of the holy dharma of the cessation and path bring forth the happiness and fortune of infinite living beings. In order to eliminate the endless torment of cyclic existence, you have not abandoned the heavy burden of your vows and aspirations. May the splendid power of the ocean of great and noble bodhisattvas bring forth the happiness and fortune of infinite living beings. Sukhavati aspiration. Emma Hong was a Sanjan on what I had hung is to Jobo to Jet and Borda. You do send Borda to Jet to Amla Sanjay Johnson Palm and Gorgi. 
Taking also part to me boy, the watch and say, show a sing come there. Dashing dinners, the poor Girma talk, it was in Jibarma Chubur. They look in an untershot, don't show, they get doggy monam to body. Chuchu Sanje Chans and Tom Jake came a drupa ginger lot to so. Taya ta penzagriya ava buddha naya so Chang ju sem ju rem pu chi Ma ke ba nam ke gyu chi Ke ba nyam pa me pa Gone gong do power Okay, uh, we have um, done uh, sort of the question and answer part today, uh, but still, I want to see if there's any uh, in case. Not covered yet. Any uh, Dr. Lai, uh, Kimberly mm -hmm. is asking, what is the most user-friendly work of Shantideva? Uh, Bodhichaya Vatara. <laughs> <laughs> I find the translation by the Padmakara translation uh, committee and to be the, the, the easiest to read. Uh, by Padmakara translation published by Shambhala. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, Laura Herman is holding up the cover of that book. Uh, if you want uh, a shorter, uh, like, overview, uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama has uh, one book that someone published, you know, uh, based on his kind of... Uh, choosing of uh, several uh, verses from each chapter uh, so it's not like you know there, there are also commentaries like Pema Chodron for example has uh, a very you know kind of heartfelt uh, you know very much tailored to a western audience uh, in, in a good way I, I don't mean it in, in, in a negative um, but it's this thick you know it, it might be a little intimidating it's called no time to lose by Pema Chodron, uh, but it's this thick uh, because every verse uh, she 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 uh, unpacks, right? Except for chapter nine, uh, she does not unpack chapter nine, the wisdom chapter, because that's very you know detailed. Uh, but His Holiness the Dalai Lama has a book called "A Flash in the Dark," a flash of lightning, something like that, a flash of lightning in the dark of the night. Uh, it's a, an ex, a quote from Shantideva, actually. Uh, there, basically, uh, the 10 chapters are there, but each chapter he only draws like a few, uh, what he considers to be like the gist. Uh, so that book especially, I think, is a good one to start. Uh, it will give you an overview of Shantideva. Uh, then, good to have um, the actual uh, like translation of Shantideva. Hmm? And then recently also uh, a commentary by one of Pedro Rinpoche's students. Minyak hmm? Kunzan hmm. Pelden. Uh, uh, his commentary uh, on Bodhichaya Vatara. Uh, is, is already translated and published also by Shambhala. Um, I, off, off hand, I forgot the title of that text, that translation of that commentary, uh, but, but not easy. Uh, so I would say start with His Holiness the Dalai Lama's overview, uh, have the Bodhichaya Vatara uh, text itself, uh, I have a copy of it. Uh, I find there there is kind of like a smaller hard cover uh, pocket book, uh, kind of like a hand, uh, just about this big. Uh, it's like a, a Buddhist Bible. 
I, I find that version. I like that one. You know, very easy. I I travel with it uh, to carry. Um, yeah, so that's that's a good. Dr. Lai, mm -hmm. there's one um, by the Dalai Lama called For the Benefit of All Beings, a commentary on the way of the Bodhisattva. It might be the same book uh, as A Flash of Lightning. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, says it was previously published as A Flash of Lightning. You're correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the latest. So what's the latest title again? Um, For the Benefit of All Beings, a commentary. Okay. On the okay. way of right. So if you if you look for that book, uh, the the it's now called for the benefit of all beings. Yeah. Put it in the chat as well. Yeah. Doctor Lai. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. My English is not good, but I please. Omar Jutras Lady, ojalá, eh, agradecer la oportunidad. Eh, me ha costado mucho trabajo entender eh, muchas cosas, pero solamente lo siento y dejo fluir. Ya leí la sabana en español eh, y pues solamente agradecer esta oportunidad de estar aquí, de sus enseñanzas. Yes, solo eso. Gracias. So thank you for uh, for all the teachings. She feels really really grateful about this, and um, she says that she is uh, sometimes she has uh, a little bit of trouble understanding it, but she already read the Satana in Spanish, and uh, I what she says that that she feels it and she flows with the. Mm -hmm. with the teaching so uh, she's really grateful about it <laughs> good 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 uh, uh hopefully this 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 entire uh longer text you know at some point can be translated uh into spanish and then of course uh, it'll be beneficial i am i'm sure and and because you know like you guys have experienced this practice um then you know make make the aspiration that that you know this can be properly translated into spanish and then spanish speaking uh, communities of practice can uh, have access to this practice as well yeah, that'll be good yeah <laughs> and thankfully uh, miriam's uh, English is infinitely uh, better than my non-existent Spanish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. My non-existent Spanish. <laughs> I only learn how to say things that are uh, related to tacos. <laughs> Dr. Lai, a friend gave me a simple path by the Dalai Lama. Uh huh. And is that another recommendation on basic Buddhist teachings by His Holiness? It was done out of London in 1996. Um, I'm not familiar with that book. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you know, uh, teachings by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Uh, would be very um, uh, kind of um, accessible. Mm. Of course, you know, I mean, to be honest also, right, it's not like His Holiness is sitting around writing books. Uh, these are like teachings that he's given publicly and then somebody, an editor, comes by, you know, um, and transforms them into books that are, um, given uh, that are then you know uh, turned into these books with his name on it uh, thank you so much uh, sure <laughs> dr light i have a question comment about the four measurables sure 
the first verse in the four first verse in the four measurables usually it says beings is boundless in space but mm -hmm. this looks like something from the seven verses of tara i think it's a very uh beautiful way to write it and i, mm -hmm. I don't really have a question but it's sort of i mean i have read different versions but I've never read this one like this mm -hmm. so it, it seems like it's right from the seven verses but i i don't know if you can go into it now but i'm I, I taught that uh, early, early on. I when we were going oh, through the practice, sorry. yeah. So, uh, no, 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 no problem. I'm just reminding <laughs> everyone that uh, if you're looking for it, it's in the videos. Uh, the significance of you know. I missed Sunday. Was it Sunday? Uh, I don't know when, but uh, definitely towards the beginning of this uh, 16 days. Uh, because I was going through, you know, part mm -hmm. by part and pointing out. So uh, if you look at some of the videos from the earlier on, uh, it's it's there. Uh, and by the way, Lisa, your uh, check for the offerings uh, arrived safely. Uh, and also Kimberly, your check also arrived safely. Thank you very much. Yeah, these know. days, the mailing service is uh, a little... Uh, wacky, uh, a combination of the weather and, uh, well, you know, the rest of it. <laughs> the mailing service is a little wacky, but still, uh, it, it got here. They got here. <laughs> Glad that it got there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we will continue tomorrow. And then again, like I said, on Saturday, we will have practice the final day. And normally, the final day is longer, fancier, but uh, not this time because, uh, as I said, I double booked. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a weekend program with the uh, um, Casa de Bet in Mexico. Uh, in Mexico. So... Um, <laughs> I have to end a little earlier. Also, for those of you who are, uh, I know maybe just a few uh, in the Asheville area, um, uh, April 10th, uh, there is a one-day outdoor retreat scheduled at uh, Southern Dharma Retreat Center uh, with, you know, socially distance and all of that. Right now, uh, it's filled, uh, only waiting list, but uh, predictably, people would drop off from that waiting list. So, I mean, I mean from, from the spots that they already have. So, there's a good chance that uh, on the waiting list, uh, it can be changed. So, if you want, you should go look at the Southern Dharma uh, Retreat Center uh, website uh, and put yourself on the waiting list. Uh, it's an outdoor uh, re uh, one day program at uh, Southern Dharma. Mm -hmm. So that's the announcement for. They asked me to announce, so here it is the announcement. <laughs> uh, and then for those of you who have done the medicine with the retreat uh, with Trisa Rinpoche, uh, with lamas from different places collaborating. We are anticipating that in on the weekend of April 3rd, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, we might be holding the third of this. Uh, we've done it twice now. We might be holding a third one on that weekend. But we need to confirm those dates and then information again will be sent out um, for registration and all of that. Mm. So that's it. Okay, bye bye. Thank you, Dr. Lai. Thank you, Dr. Lai. Gracias. 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 Gracias.